Flying turns at Knoebels as the only wooden bobsled coaster still in operation. This is such a unique ride, and we should be very thankful we even get to experience it. This coaster is plagued by construction and testing issues, so was it all worth it in the end? Find out in this review of Flying Turns. The first bobsled coasters were made of wood. These ones were all built by John Norman Bartlett. These coasters were built in the late 1920s and 1930s, but they all went extinct by the mid-1970s. Intamin revived the bobsled coaster in 1984, and Mach followed suit in 1985. These ones were made of steel. Now flash forward to 2005. Knobles had just closed Whirlwind, a Vacoma looping coaster. In the fall of that year, they announced their intentions to build flying turns in that site. This would be a wooden bobsled coaster built in-house and inspired by the work of Bartlett. COVID-19 caused a lot of delays in the amusement industry. Busch Gardens and SeaWorld delayed their new for 2020 coasters until 2022, and Six Flags Over Texas delayed one of their new for 2020 coasters until 2023 with Aquaman Power Wave. But this is just child's play. Flying Turns of Knobles was delayed time and time again. Most parks would have just given up. So why was the ride delayed? It is no secret safety standards have become more stringent since the original bobsled coasters were built. The park's biggest issue was designing a train that could reliably and safely complete the circuit. The original trains went too fast. The second generation trains required the track to be redesigned and modified, but during testing, they jackknifed. People were skeptical the ride would ever open, but Knobles just kept on working at it, and their perseverance paid off. Flying Turns finally opened at the very end of the 2013 season, after nearly 8 years of construction, and it won the best new ride in the 2014 Golden Ticket Awards. The ride had become a tricky one to experience in recent years. Flying Turns was closed for the entire 2020 season for retracking. A fourth lift hill was added towards the end of the ride to help the trains get back to the station. Then the coaster never opened to the public in 2021. This was due to the staffing shortages that plagued the entire amusement industry post-pandemic. Flying Turns requires 8 staff members, and considering the ride's lower throughput, the park found it more cost-effective to staff for smaller rides instead. I don't really blame them. The only time Flying Turns ran in 2021 was for private events. Fortunately, the coaster was open for much of the 2022 season. However, it is still one of the least efficient coasters out there. It is a stark contrast to the rest of the park, which prides itself in speedy operations. But this is the price we pay for nostalgia. The ride has four trains, but each is comprised of just three cars. Each car holds a max of two riders, but it is not uncommon to see solo riders. This is because of the ride's very strict weight limit. No individual car can exceed 400 pounds. Solo riders or pairs are weighed before entering the queue line. The ride has a light aviation theme, and this is called KSA, or the Knoebels Security Administration. The exact weight is not displayed. An employee will just let you know if you're allowed to ride, and or if you need to split up. The cars are loaded from the front, heaviest to lightest. When you reach the load platform, the employee will assign you a row. You stand on a scale, and the employees will rearrange guests as needed to comply with the regulations. As before, the exact weights are not displayed for guests to see. Again, going with the aviation theme, you are just told which boarding gate, aka row, to go to. This whole process is why the line can move at a dreadfully slow pace. The ride handles roughly 200 riders per hour. A full queue takes 45 minutes, but it often stretches beyond the entrance on busy days. If you can beat the crowds here, I would ride flying turns first. But do not be surprised if it builds a line early. In my most recent visit, the coaster already had 50 or so people queuing up 20 minutes before the park even opened. Locals know you need to hit this early. Another thing to consider is whether rain is in the forecast. I have seen this close in rainy days, so I believe it cannot run precipitation. This would not be the first bobsled coaster to close in these conditions due to the trackless vehicles and potential draining issues. When it's finally your time to board, you enter these bobsleds. You sit on a padded cushion with your legs outstretched. Pairs of riders need to sit in the laps of each other. The only restraint is a single seatbelt that wraps around the frontmost rider. The vehicles then have high sides and seat backs for comfort and clearance purposes. Then there are grab bars on the sides for guests to hold onto. Once dispatched, 
you roll forwards and climb the first of four, yes four, lift hills. What follows is a 540 degree downwards helix. It starts slow, but it has a mild force at the bottom. And then there's this hump on the way to the second lift hill that comes really close to giving weightlessness. This section also establishes two things. One, the trough is gigantic. It completely envelops you, and you cannot see beyond the ride. It's a neat visual. Two, the ride is shockingly smooth. It is far smoother than the steel bobsled coasters. This trough is not slatted like the Mach ones. Then the transitions out of the trough are not rough like the Intamin ones. The second lift is considerably larger and takes you to the ride's max height of 50 feet or 15 meters. The next part is the meat of the experience. You have a figure 8 layout stacked on top of each other. It consists of a series of 180 degree turns and S-bends. These turns aren't too notable, minus the visuals. Once you reach ground level, you reach your max speed of 24 miles per hour or 39 kilometers per hour. This is where things get interesting. The last few S-bends have considerably more swinging. You really climb up the trough walls as you change direction. The swaying reminds me more of what you get on an out of control tube slide as opposed to the other bobsled coasters. Until 2020, the return to the station consists of a long brake run through a maintenance shed. You then have a turn and one more lift hill and route back to the station. Now, you have an additional small lift hill going into the maintenance shed. It doesn't really make much of a difference for me on ride, but if it helps the ride stay open, I am all for it. This coaster boasts a total track length of 1,300 feet, or 400 meters, but it honestly feels twice as long as that, most likely because of the number of lift hills extending the ride time. Before I give my final score, I want to discuss the visual impact of this ride. Due to the nature of the bobsled coasters, you can't really see the trains too well off-ride. You just see the underside or outside of the trough. The best way to see this ride is from aboard Stratosphere, but for those who are not a fan of drop towers, Knobles fortunately has a few observation areas around the attraction offering a rare glimpse of the ride. One of them even has an old bobsled car on display in a case. I did not know about that until a local pointed it out to me in my most recent visit. So what would I rate flying turns? Purely as a ride, I would give this coaster a 6 out of 10. It is decent. It's the smoothest bobsled coaster by far, and some of the bends towards the end have some nice swaying. But I just can't rank it any higher because a lot of the ride is pretty mild. But as an amusement park fan, I definitely admire the dedication of Knobles to preserve and recreate history. No other park would have taken on a project like this and stuck with it through and through. While I prefer some of the other coasters and rides at Knobles over this one, you will not find anything else quite like flying turns out there. So those are my thoughts on flying turns at Knobles. What are your thoughts on the only remaining wooden bobsled coaster? Do you think it was worth all the time and effort? Let me know down in the comments. If you enjoyed this review, I would appreciate it if you gave this video a like, and you considered subscribing, because there'll be a lot more roller coaster and amusement park videos here at Canopy Coaster. Thanks for watching.